Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we would look at tax holidays and tax havens. This topic is covered in international accounting, could be covered on the CPA exam as well as the ACCA exam. If you haven't connected with me on LinkedIn, please do so. YouTube is where I house all my 1,500 plus accounting, auditing, finance, and tax lectures. Please subscribe, like if you like the videos, like them, share them, put them in the playlist. If they're benefiting you, it means they might benefit other people. So please share the wealth. On my website, I do have additional resources in addition to my lectures, such as the PowerPoint slides, notes, multiple choice questions, CPA questions, so on and so forth. Please check out my website if you are interested. If you are looking for a study pal, for, if you're studying for the CPA CFA, I strongly suggest you visit studypal.co. It's an artificial intelligence driven study buddy platform that will match you with the buddy. They have users in 85 countries and 200, 2,800 cities. So let's talk about tax holiday. What is tax holiday? Basically, it's an incentive to attract foreign direct investment because one way to compete is to lower your tax rate. Well, the rate alone may not be enough. So you need to give more incentive for a company to either uh, to increase their investments or to start their investments in your country. So therefore, that's what a tax holiday is. Basically, you invest a certain amount of money. Uh, you invest in a certain industry. You invest for a period of time. I will give you a tax exemption for a period of time to entice you to to be there now this also happened in the us in the us certain uh, local government or county government or state government they may give incentives to corporations to open it to open in their within their jurisdiction for example if you open in my city the mayor the mayor might say i'll give you five year tax exemption or i'll give you a piece of land as an incentive so basically tax holiday is an incentive for you to operate for example in malaysia just to give you some examples a foreign corporation that qualify for pioneer status, you would receive an exemption from income tax on 70% of your annual profit for five years. Now, what is pioneer status? Basically, there is uh, the Malaysian Industrial Development Committee. They will determine if you have that status or not based on the product or the activity that they require. They also, if you undertake a project involving the manufacture of specialized machinery and equipment, you would receive 100% exemption for up to 10 years. Basically, incentive for you to to innovate, to innovate, to innovate. In Sri Lanka, a tax holidays could range from four to 12 years, depending on the activity and the size of the investments. Obviously, the more you invest and the longer uh, you're going to be investing. And if the uh, if it's in a in an industry that's needed, then they're going to give you tax holiday. Hungary is another country where they offer tax holidays to investors that that varies with the level of investments. For example, if you invest three billion Hungarian forint, which is their uh, their currency or invest at least 1 billion and create 100 and new jobs, you qualify for a 10 year holiday tax. So just basically encouraging company to move into their country. Poland is another case. They offer tax incentives on activities that carried out in 400 specialized economic zones with amount of incentive depending on the investment location and the amount of the investments. Um, another country I can think of is the UAE, Dubai. Sometimes they offer, they have different type of incentives if you operate in a special, in a special industry. So that's basically what tax holiday is. Uh, simply put, I'll give you a break for a period of time if you operate in my jurisdiction. That's basically it. Now, tax havens are a little bit different. And uh, tax havens um, basically is you pay a lower tax rate than your home country. Basically, you find a place to pay a lower tax rate than your home country. Now, there are a number of tax existing with abnormally low corporate income tax rate or no income tax rate at all that companies and individuals have found useful. Now, keep in mind, we don't talk about individuals. I may have an international tax you know, series about individuals, but this series deals with companies or corporations. Um, so simply put, you operate in a place and usually they're islands. They don't have to be islands, but when you think about tax haven, you think of Bermuda or the Cayman Island. And the reason those, the reason the islands are known for this, because in, in a way, that's their only source of income. Although you don't pay taxes there, even if you pay 3%, well, Otherwise, they don't get anything. So they, they accept 3% rather than nothing because really they don't have any other uh, natural resources. They're basically tourist countries and they create, you know, financial services jobs. So that's why when you think of those, you think of the Cayman Island, but those are not the only one. I just want to make sure you're aware of this. So don't let this picture mislead you. But that's the picture that comes to mind that people hide or companies hide their money there in a sense that they pay lower taxes. Okay. Um, these jurisdictions are known as tax haven, include the Bahamas, 
the Isle of Man, which has no corporate income tax, and Ireland, okay, which has a corporate income tax of 12.5. Ireland is pretty famous, especially for the Apple case. Now on this slide, you will see a number of countries. This is based on the Congressional Research Service 2015. Now bear in mind, this is old, this is 2015. Now we're almost end of 2019. This list is constantly changing. If anything, it's sh shrinking because the U.S., uh, they're putting more and more pressure on any country that they think it's a tax haven because they want, they, they don't, you know, they don't want you to kind of, in a quote unquote, abuse the system. It's, you're not really abusing the system, but if you are hiding money, um, the, the U.S. government won't want to get their share from U.S. Uh, from U.S. companies as well. Uh, but basically, this is a political issue rather than anything else. I can, you know, for example, the Middle East, Lebanon, I come from Lebanon. I really don't want to operate in a place like Lebanon because of the red tape and other economic issues. But the point is Lebanon is considered a tax haven. Now, whether it's considered today a tax haven or not, I'm not really sure. But you can take a look at the list and see, you know, Bermuda, that's that's well known. Um, Switzerland also, you know, it's considered a tax haven. For example, Luxembourg, um, Microsoft, Microsoft, uh, uh, Skype, Skype, for example, Skype. Skype is a Microsoft company, but if you if you look at Skype, Skype is located in Luxembourg. Although it's 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 a it's a, it's owned by Microsoft. Microsoft is in uh, um, Seattle, Washington State, but uh, Skype is 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 headquartered in Luxembourg. Uh, why? Because if they're operating in Luxembourg, then they pay a lower tax uh, rate on money earned internationally. Okay, so this is basically the overall idea. A little bit more about tax havens and, and how do they work. Um, so if a company is involved in international business, they might find it beneficial uh, to establish an operation in a tax haven to avoid paying taxes or pay less taxes um, in, in more than one country. Just an example, let's assume a Brazilian company manufactured a product for $70. So the cost of the product equal to $70. They sell it to Mexico for 100. So if they sell it to Mexican to the Mexicans for 100, well, there's a profit of $30. Now in Mexico, in, in Brazil, they'll have to pay 34% taxes on that profit. Now, what could the Brazilian company do? The Brazilian company, um, what they would do, they could manufacture the product and establish a sales subsidiary in the Bahamas. So basically, they will, it cost them $70. What they would do, they will establish that subsidiary in the Bahamas. They would sell it to the, to the, to that subsidiary for $80. They make a profit of 10. Then the subsidiary sells it to the Mexican company for a hundred and they will make the additional twenty dollars in profit. Now bear in mind this twenty dollars is sitting in the Bahamas. Now what are the, the rules to bring it back to the to the what are the rules to bring that money back to the to Brazil? That's a different story, but the point is now they have twenty dollars in a sense that's tax shelter. So in, under this example, they only pay taxes on this ten dollars, which is ten times thirty-four percent. So this is basically the basic idea of uh, of tax um, of tax haven use them um, use them to shelter some of your income from taxes in high and high tax rate jurisdiction okay now in the us there's a considerable indirect evidence that multinational companies um, from the united states and other countries shift their shift their income in tax haven countries i mean Again, the incentive is there. If you're going to pay less taxes, yes, of course, the incentive is there. A study was conducted by the Congressional Research Service um, in 2015, estimated that 50%, which is 611 million of profit earned by U.S. companies overseas, were located in, in just seven tax haven countries. So simply put, half of the profit from companies operating outside the U.S., they are registered in what's considered tax haven countries. What's tax haven countries? The rate is lower than your home country, basically, in a sense. Um, and those are the no notably those countries, the Netherlands, Ireland, those are kind of, if you want to call them offender, big offender, but it's, they're not offender, but uh, they are considered to be main, um, uh, uh, main target Luxembourg, uh, Switzerland, Bermuda, those are notably those countries. But though, as you saw, the list is long and it's constantly changing. Now, a case in point that I, I would like to discuss is, is um, as Ireland and specifically Apple, Apple computers. Now Apple registered their headquarter in Ireland. And that's long time ago. And what they did, they transferred their patent. Their, their, their patent is located in Ireland. So they registered their head office and their important patent, which is they pay 12.5%. 
versus a higher rate in the US. Right now, today in the US, it's still 21%. In the US, at some point, it was 39%. So the US, and notice Ireland is very small relative to the US, but it doesn't matter how small or how big. The point is, uh, the point is you just you, you just register there. Now, all the earnings that Ireland, that, that Apple, that Apple earn internationally, other than the US, that's, it's considered to be taxed in Ireland. Okay. Now, also, what happened is the Irish company will charge the U.S. company a fee to, to access the patent because remember the patent are located in Ireland. So the U.S. company will transfer money fund to Ireland to pay for that, like royalty money to pay for the fees. Now, for the for for Apple U.S., that's an expense because when you pay when you pay royalty, that's an expense. For the for I, Apple in Ireland, that's revenue. That's okay. It's revenue because it's taxed at a lower rate. They will take it and it's taxed at a lower rate. Now, now the situation became very bad that the EU in 2016, they, they kind of, they, they, they count, they recomputed Apple's, uh, Apple's tax bill and they charged Apple with 14.6 B billion plus 1 billion in penalties. So approximately they charged them 16 billion approximately in interest on back, on on back taxes plus interest, so approximately 16 billion, and Apple was happy to pay it. Ireland, they were not happy that Apple paying it because Ireland they want they want to keep Apple there. Now, what is the disadvantage of a tax haven? If, if why don't everyone does what Apple does is th there is no um, tax foreign tax credit, so you don't get tax credit for the taxes that you paid in Ireland or in tax haven country. Also, the money. Now remember, the money that's in Ireland cannot be brought to the U.S. If you want to bring it to the U.S., if you want to call what's called repatriate that money, you're going to have to pay taxes on it. So it's sitting in Ireland. They use it for their operation, but they cannot bring it to the U.S. They can if they want to. Just have to pay taxes on it. And this issue became very uh, not a, um, a front page story, not front page story, but um, uh, in in the news and uh, the post financial crisis because because the government was trying to give incentive to companies such as, and Apple is not the only one, Google, Microsoft, they all have those operations in uh, tax haven countries. They were trying to ask these companies if they can bring some money in the US during the financial crisis. And also during President Trump, why? Because if you bring money, you're gonna you're gonna pay you're gonna pay taxes. When you pay taxes, the U.S. government will, will collect their money. But what they're saying is they will give will give them a break for that for that repatriation repatriation of the money. Okay. Um, again, as I said, the Netherlands and Ireland, uh, they're like I, I use the word offenders, but they're not really offenders because they account um, for uh, the word together. They were, they, they were the location of for 24 percent of all income earned overseas by u.s companies so so u.s companies um uh, registered in, in in ireland as well as in the netherland okay um in 2013 foreign direct investment into the netherland were 4.3 billion and to the u.s was only 2.8 billion simply put <laughs> um, companies were registering in the netherland uh, they are they are trying to get business in the Netherlands, investing money in the Netherlands, more than, you know, 4.3. It's not double, but way more than the U.S., although the U.S. economy is 24 times larger than the Netherlands. The point is the Netherlands is a tax haven. Companies want to establish a presence there because they pay lower taxes. Okay. Another study published in 2016 indicated that 376 of the Fortune 500 companies had at least one subsidiary in a tax haven country. Duh. Well, are we surprised or what? Okay, with the most popular being the Netherlands. Once again, the Netherlands is one of these places. Pfizer, Pfizer, the largest pharmaceutical, had 181 subsidiaries and tax havens, and Goldman Sachs had 987 tax haven subsidiaries. Well, yeah, that makes sense for Goldman Sachs because they deal with money. They should know where to hide their money. With 537 of them, of these subsidiaries, and the Cayman Island alone. Well, again, that makes sense. But again, as I mentioned earlier, that those places are shrinking because the U.S., for one thing, the U.S. needs the money. So they are trying to put pressure on these countries to make sure that uh, it's not as easy for companies to be in tax havens anymore. It's, it's Relatively speaking, it's harder. Let's put it this way. Again, this goes uh, with the, the uh, uh, political pressure. Uh, you know, the government needs money. The government is broke. The U.S. government, they want to make sure they collect as much money as possible from U.S. companies. Therefore, they will make it harder for those countries to shelter, shelter that income. Okay. 
And from disclosure provided in annual report, one research study were able to calculate the foreign tax rate paid on 50 US companies. And let's see what happened. So this is, this is again, this is from disclosure, basically from the annual report. For 28 of these companies, okay, of the 50, 28, the average tax rate was less than 10%, okay? Uh, obviously, they are operating in tax haven countries. For example, Oracle paid on, a, on average a foreign tax rate of 3.8, Oracle only 3.8 on their foreign income, and Nike only paid 1.4% tax on their foreign operation. Why? Because they're operating in those tax haven, or, or that's the assumption that they're operating in tax haven countries. So this is basically an overview about tax haven countries. If you have any questions, please email me. If you want additional lectures, please visit my website where you can find PowerPoint slides, multiple choice questions, a CPA, over 2000 CPA questions. Uh, please consider subscribing if you think that's beneficial. If you're studying for your CPA exam, as always, study hard. It's worth it. Good luck.